everybody, it's Kelly with Black Thread Studio Stitching Cafe. I kind of changed it, and I'll tell you why, but today is September 5th, 20, no it's not, it's the 6th, 2024, it's a Friday, and I took today off because it's right in the middle of the two lectures that I'm doing at the Great Wisconsin Quilt Show, and it's my anniversary with Jim. We've been together for 11 years, so we will be celebrating later on today. Okay, where do I begin? Let's start, let's talk about um, Black Thread Studio Stitching Cafe. So with um, <clears throat> with me getting my lectures booked, I got a boost of confidence, and I thought, you know, I'm kind of pa past a lot of grieving stuff and trying to figure out what life is all about. And I decided that I might want to be social again. I might want to get out there and, and chit chat to real people. So um, I actually have four or five, I'm calling them interviews booked. But what I plan to do, what I want to do, because this is what I'm interested in, so I hope you guys will be interested in the same, is to um, go actually visit people see their studio space, see where they sit and stitch, see what they like to stitch, um, dig through their stash, you know, just kind of get down and dirty with them and see how much they will share. And then um, my idea is the cafe comes because who doesn't want to sit and chat with coffee? And my idea is that we'll see if the interview is one cup or two cups. We'll see how far we get through the interviews. And um, I'm really excited about it. I have not figured out, you know, I'm technically challenged. And I haven't figured out quite, but I'm going to try to learn how to do um, Zoom or another, another kind of connection via, um, what you know what I want to say, video recording, so that I can um, possibly interview people that aren't local where I won't be able to just get in the car and go see them. So um, that's my plan and I'm hoping that you will join me. Um, I do have my first four or five booked. My next, or my first one will be next Friday, Friday the 13th. And um, gosh, I, I don't know why I want to keep it surprised um, just because I think I'm so excited about it. So I thought, I would surprise you guys too, but I will be driving to her home and sitting with her and we will be doing um, Stitch Cafe uh, with a cup of something and, um, and kind of talk to her. So I think that's all I'll tell you right now. So I hope you'll stay tuned and, and check out. I'll probably be so excited next week that I will probably try to post that Friday night. Okay, so did you see my post about my lecture yesterday? Um, just fair warning, this is gonna be just a little bit of a chit chat, and then I'm kind of regrouping, so I'll tell you what I'm gonna work on next, if you guys wanna follow along with that. So um, thank you for being here, thank you for the new subscribers. If you guys will like and subscribe, you hear it from all the YouTubers, it does help. Um, if they're worthy of liking and subscribing, <laughs> I would appreciate it. So anyway, yesterday, should I just start from the beginning and tell you? I mean, it was a, I was a frantic mess, but I was trying not to be. I was so prepared. I mean, I had been, I had been up at night going through my head, everything that I had to pack and get ready. And, you know, I got all the, the stuff. I got a mannequin for Sam's jacket and, you know, I stopped at my mom's and I got the most beautiful fresh hydrangeas. I'll put a, a picture of them at the end here. Um, so if you haven't been here with me before, or even if you have, here's the deal. I don't know how to slip in pictures, but anything that I talk about that I want to share to you, I'll always tack on at the end as a kind of a little slideshow. So um, should I even go through all the things that went wrong? from my sister for getting the collapsible wagon and we had to carry a bunch of stuff in by hand and we were like shooting things around, like knocking people over with the mannequin and my big quilt stand. And um, I forgot my notes for the other stories that I shared. 
and then we didn't have time to set up and then the projector went and hook up to my <laughs> my camera and then as I'm setting up I literally in my head went oh my god I forgot Sam's quilt how am I going to tell these wonderful people that are sitting here wanting to hear Sam's story and see Sam's quilt so anyway I forgot it because it's hanging right here I pressed it I ironed it I was looking at it I didn't finish it and I told myself that was okay. I think I shared with you guys earlier that my friend Sarah, hang on, I'm gonna close the blinds because I think you're getting a lot of glare. My friend Sarah, my dear friend Sarah in England, I was talking to her and I was stressing a little bit about it. And I, I told her, and this is what I didn't get to say in the lecture yesterday. I just felt like um, I wasn't ready to finish it. I feel like once I finish it, it's gonna be kind of like, okay, that's done. I'm saying that Sam's gone. I mean, I know he is, I'm not in denial about it, but it's like, okay, there's his, the memorial, the, you know, the thing that I did for him and and that's done. Um, I'm also wanting to do a sampler for him and I don't know, I'm just not ready to finish it. So I did get, um, I did get the checkerboard borders on. Should I hold it up and show you guys? I probably should, to be fair, since I didn't bring it yesterday. Um, so this is this is going to be part of the backing. I don't have enough fabric, but I did buy some more K fabric yesterday while I was at the quilt show. So I'll piece the back in all kinds of crazy bold flowers. Um, so here it is so far with um, all the yo-yos on there. So you can see I haven't done any more kind of embroidery or anything to, you know, make the leaves and make the flowers stand out. Um, that's the part that's been hard for me. So... I mean, I, I think it was okay. Of course, it was a disappointment um, for everyone and for myself that I forgot the quilt, especially there was um, Jim's sister Susan was there with her husband Tom. Elaine was there with her girls, Emma and Charlotte. And I know for sure they sent yo-yos um, and probably wanted to see their yo-yos on the quilt. So anyway, I just felt bad. <laughs> but I, I did appreciate... Um, everyone that came and kind of made me feel okay about it. Even my sister Deb, my older sister, who I truly drive her nuts. And she was so wonderful. She kept calm yesterday. She didn't get mad at me. <laughs> she didn't say that I was doing a bad job or anything. She just kept calm. Um, the big, the biggest thing I think was that it may, and this was probably my fault because if it went from one to two and the lecture was supposed to be an hour, in my mind, I was thinking, I'm going to give them their money's worth. I'm going to go from one to two. Well, about five minutes to two, I realized I hadn't showed that I needed to get to the end and show the video that I did for Sam. And, uh, you know, it was going to be this big touching, you know, ending. Um, and then I wanted to be able to meet people and, you know, give you a hug and, see if anybody else had a grief story they wanted to share because that's what you want to do. You just want to um, have somebody listen to your story and, and say your loved one's name. And um, Jill, I'm glad that you came and talked to me and I really want to um, go to lunch with you and Lisa. They're local, so make sure you get in touch with me. Um, but anyway, that that's how that went. I was just really rushed to get out of there. They didn't give me any time to get my things packed up. Thanks to my friend Elaine and her girls and my sister, we just gathered things up quickly and we're trying to get out of the room. The lady actually came and said to me, the next volunteer for the next lecture, she actually said, I'm gonna say this as nicely as I can, but you need to pack up your stuff and get out. And I thought, whoa. So, um, so what I learned from that is don't go a full hour, <laughs> go like, like 40 or 45 minutes and allow yourself time to at least say bye to people and pack up because they want you out of that room at two. 
I didn't realize that I had to um, be out of there by two. I thought I had until two to finish my lecture. So I'm done with that. I learned a lot. I loved doing it. Tomorrow I'm doing the Yo-Yo Sisterhood, My Life in Stitches. I'm really excited about that. My, um, my younger sister Tracy's helping me with that one. So they split their duties and my mom's going to be there. So that will be a lot of fun. So if you're going to be there, stop and say hello. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm already thinking, I don't know if they will have me back. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know how they figure that stuff. It was my first lecture. I was so grateful that they um, accepted me um, and gave me a chance. I don't know how many uh, um, tickets that you have to sell for them to go, oh yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see if she wants to come back. But I am planning on my my next um, project to offer up as a lecture. And I've talked about it before with you guys, but I'm gonna turn it into a lecture and, and I'm gonna share all that with you now and see. And if they don't, if the um, Great Wisconsin Quilt Show doesn't invite me back. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity that I had this year. I'm going to kill it tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be a really bamboozle of a yo-yo um, <laughs> lecture. Anyway, um, if if I, I shouldn't say if I'm not invited back because that's not being very positive. I will have this as a lecture to also share it with your quilt guilds because this is my goal. I, um, I want to share what I do with everyone. Um, I want to hear your stories. And that's also why we're turning into Stitching Cafe, Black Thread Studio Stitching Cafe. So I want it to be about everyone who comes to uh, visit me and have a, a cuppa to share your story. So um, isn't that a beautiful mug, by the way? Okay, here we go. Do you guys remember I wrote, um, during COVID, I wrote uh, The Lake Ripley Monster and Hanley and Reed or something like that. Um, so my beloved Lake Ripley in Cambridge, Wisconsin is rumored to have a Lake Ripley Monster that people think they have seen. My brother thinks he has seen it. Um, and there have been some stories and books written about it. So I kind of wrote a children's story and back in the day when in so that was four years ago during covid i asked my friend uh sweet friend rita who's a unbelievable artist who you have met here on my channel if she would illustrate it for me she agreed to illustrate the story but she didn't feel well enough um after she started so i have this beautiful beautiful um cover page that she did so that's hadley and reed in the boat they fall asleep and the Lake Ripley Monster comes to save the day. Now, I don't know why the Lake Ripley Monster didn't save the day yesterday and um, make sure that I had my Sam's quilt with me, but I'll forgive him for that. So, um, okay. So Rita did that beautiful drawing. It just captures exactly what I wanted um, for a children's book. And then what I did is I um, made the copy onto fabric paper. So you can see, I'm gonna try to do this so you guys can see a little bit better, I guess. You can see, um, probably because my printer, it probably depends on your printer, the color isn't quite as vibrant as her original drawing, but I was really happy with the way it turned out. So this is gonna be a medallion quilt because that's what I like to do is medallion quilts. So I started with this in the middle, and then I love English paper piecing. I love yo-yos, so I was gonna incorporate all of that into this quilt, and I am gonna bring you down right now so that you can see what I'm talking about. So hang on, don't get dizzy. I got a new um, selfie stick, but it's in the car. I was so tired yesterday, I didn't unpack anything. But I've got a Get everything repacked for tomorrow okay so with the medallion quilt there you go um and the english paper paper piece wreath i'm going to put around the border i laid it out very carefully and as you can see it's not laying flat 
and I figured out which one I stitched in um, the wrong way. This one is the one that's holding it up and making it buckle. So I have to redo that. But it is going to be, uh, you know, so something like that around. And then the fabrics, the, I'm just going to keep building around it. And these are the other fabrics that I have. Now, when I originally picked this out, I, um, I wasn't sure about this fabric. I mean, it's kitschy and it's cute, but it just wasn't really my style. Um, you know, all lake fabric. I was going to use that for the backing. I wasn't sure about it. And then I ordered this off of Spoonflower. I thought that was cute. I liked the blue. I liked, um, I just liked the motif of this. But I, I have to tell you, I don't, I don't like the way this feels. It's, um, I just don't like the way it feels. It feels pla plasticky. So I usually don't wash, wash my fabric before I do my quilts. I usually wash it all together afterwards because I like how it gets puckered after it's quilted. So I don't, if I do decide to use this, I'm just going to wash it all together afterwards and hope that it, I'm sure it will soften up. So I probably will use this on the back. And then I have this whole array of colors that I really, really love. And then somehow I will incorporate um, the hexi flowers on there. These are the one inch English paper pieced. So I have a few of those made. I don't have quite uh, figured out exactly um, how I'm going to place those or how I'm going to piece the borders. Um, hello. Piece the borders so that um, it turns out to be a cute quilt. But my plan is to, the lecture wood, um, I, got, I, I hope people are interested interest in this because in my idea all, all everything that I think about for lectures includes the quilt and then the story behind it so not not kind of like you know a how-to but more of the the stories and the emotions attached to quilts so that's what I'm going for on this one it would be um sharing some things that I've already written about the lake I did uh, an article. I was a guest writer for my mom's article from Shirley's Cottage, which was in the Cambridge newspaper for many years. And I did For Love of the Lake. I have read this too before, but I'm saving that because I will include that in the lecture. It will include the children's story that I wrote for Hadley and Reed. It will include some history about Cambridge and Lake Ripley. Um, Row Pottery is from Cambridge. There's a really cool history about Cambridge and it's such a lovely, lovely place um, and my heart is there so I would I would love to share it. My new love <laughs> besides quilting is um, I'm starting to hook rugs. I'm I mean it's it's pretty I'm not gonna say it's easy. I'm following Deanne Fitzpatrick who I have fallen in love with and I'm also following Deanna from Ribbon Candy um, Rug Hooking. Totally different styles, totally different personalities, but there are things that I am taking and love from each one of them. Um, for Deanne, she does a lot with yarn, which I like because the strips of wool scare me. I'm not sure if I have the patience to get them even and the proper height. Um, and not that Deanna from Ribbon Can Candy Hooking is, is really into that perfection either. So that's why I'm, I'm, taking, um, I'm ta taking note from both of them and trying to incorporate and find my own way and my own skill in that. But I love it so much. It, <clears throat> it gives me a meditation and a peace um, different than what I get from quilting or cross-stitching or embroidery, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm happy to have it. I'm really happy to have it because um, it's something 
that it's a little bit more freedom for me. I don't have to sit down and follow a pattern and try to be counting on the cross stitch if I don't feel like doing that. Um, sometimes embroidery is, you know, I don't know. It's just that I, I don't get into real detailed stuff. And then on quilting, I love to sit and do hand stuff, but to sit at my machine, I'm just not that into wanting to sit at my machine these days. So I, I'm going more for the yo-yos and the English paper piecing. So with rug hooking, it's just a matter of sitting there with your hook and the yarn or wool and um, just kind of, you know, doing that um, loop by loop, 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 pull it up, loop motion. Um, so my plan is to do quilts that have a companion hooked rug with it that it can either be turned into a pillow it can be, um, you know, something that's on the wall, or like for this quilt, um, for Hadley and Reed's, the Lake Ripley Monster, I envision just a really, really sweet quilt, like sitting on a screened porch, or like a screen porch with a really comfy chair, screen porch with um, a little day bed where you can take a nap and have the quilt, and then have the quilt you know, on the floor by the chair or the bed. Uh, not the quilt, the, the rug, the hooked rug. Um, it's not going to be a complete match of the quilt. It's not gonna be, you know, matching. It's gonna match, but it's not gonna be a replica of it. It will be a companion piece. So my idea on this one is that the whole rug will probably be mapped out um, in English paper piecing with some, um, things around the border that would have to do with the lake. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. I think I'm gonna regroup after tomorrow's yo-yo lecture. I'm gonna regroup. I ordered um, I ordered, I ordered, ordered some cross-stitch charts from uh, Country Sampler and here in Wisconsin. And um, I'm, um, some are gonna be gifted to Sarah in England because it's really hard for her to get some of the charts she wants. And the one that she wanted, oh, I don't remember. It was a Stacy Nash uh, Rabbits going across it that's an exclusive for Country Sampler. Um, I got that for her. Um, not because I'm nice. She asked me if I could get it for her and I told her I would. <laughs> so, um, and then I found one that I ordered for myself that's um, a needlework press and I can't remember what it's called. I, I thought it would be here by now in the mail so I could have shown it to you today, but it's flowers. It's a really pretty flowers. So I think I'm going to take a little break. I'm going to start designing the rug, working a little bit on um, this quilt and, um, and then I think I'm in between. I'm just going to start cross stitching a little bit on that flower sampler. Um, <clears throat> it, it won't be for Sam, but everything I do right now, I'm, I'm really including flowers in it. Um, and that makes me think of him. So my new thing, I shared this at my lecture yesterday and then on the video yesterday um, that I did with my friend Elaine. When I read Sarah's grief and stitching statement that was part of my lecture, um, this is Sarah um, Stonehouse. She's on Instagram. Um, when I told her that I wanted to start my sampler for Sam, and I just didn't know if I could, she said, every stitch will be um, a kiss for your, for your sweet Sam. So um, I think, along with our little stitching cafe, um, I think if we each, every time, we sit down to stitch something, whether it be by hand or machine, that each stitch could be a little kiss for whoever we're working on that for, even if it's for ourselves. For a long time, I um, gave away everything I made. I didn't make anything for myself, and um, I'm, I'm making things for myself. So those stitches can still be kisses. <clears throat> So I hope you guys have a really, really good Friday, a good weekend. I will definitely check in with you and let you know. If, I'll let you know if uh, my life in stitches goes well. 
and I think it will. I learned a lot. I'm not going to flower. I learned that lesson. I'm giving myself time to get packed up. We literally had to drag, drag my quilts and everything out to the hall and pack them up in the suitcase. So I don't know who to talk about, <laughs> about that or if I should just let it go. I do kind of like to uh, stir the pot and make a little trouble sometimes. You guys probably didn't know that about me because I seem like I'm really nice. But also, if you know this, you know I'm reading, um, I'm doing a year, it's Donna Cameron, um, a year of living kindly, I think it's called. So I'm learning the difference between being kind, which is coming from your heart, which is sometimes hard for me, for people that, um, for, you know, when stupid things happen, like the lady that told me that I had to pack up my stuff and get out. It was hard for me to be kind to her. I, did, I just didn't say anything. I wasn't mean to her. I don't want you to think that. Um, anyway, the different. I was nice to her, but I wasn't kind, and there was a difference. So, all right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'll just tack a few little things at the end. The, the great Wisconsin quilt show was wonderful. I did share some quilts on my video yesterday when I was talking to Elaine. Um, just a few of my favorites that I'll show again if you didn't watch that video, if you don't want to, because it's no big deal. Um, I mainly did that for the people who came to the quilt show, and um, we couldn't get this the video going that I had for Sam, and we ran out of time. They were pushing me out of the room, so I posted that. Um, but I was going to say something else. What was it? Anyway... Thanks for being here. I will follow up with you and have a really good weekend. And, oh, I'm going to put some of my favorite quilts at the end of this stuff. No wonder I forgot Sam's quilt. Um, I just want you to know, I mean, they were beautiful. They were beautiful. Some of them were absolutely stunning, the work. And I'm not going to say that it was my favorite favorite, but my favorite is the old antique one that I, that I slipped in there for you guys to see. So enjoy and I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, yeah, okay, they're for nap with me. The actual bed. Thank you.